Um, we're actually going to a Magic Mike show. Oh no! <laughs> you guys oh no! It. Immediately he's claimed got, by the man. He's got the best six pack in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I quit my job at Magic Mike a long uh, time ago. Uh, okay, they won't hear me. Kid. Yo, day three, baby. Day three, see you on with the strip. Sam, see you on the strip. We're about to go do some talks. Tell the guys what's up. Yeah. Teach them about the basics, cold approach in any environment and then we're going to take them out to the link promenade a little bit of outdoor kind of lazy style cold approach a lot of the guys have never done it before yeah. so it's always good to, to crack that egg for the first time oh! Oh! Yeah! yeah so that's what we do in the boot camp first we do a speech for about two hours uh, you know go through all the basics as sam said then we take them out there and we actually get them to do some practical exercises yeah. Uh, because it's all about practicing, you know. Yeah. You could know all the theory in the world, you could know everything. Get the reps in, baby. Yeah, it's all about the reps, baby. Just like the gym, you know, if you read a book Same about thing. the gym, you're not going to get bigger muscles. Same as the gym, bro. So if you read a book about dating, it only you're gets not... you so far. You've yeah. got to get out there and do the approaches, baby. Exactly. <laughs> No, that's Texas. So awesome. Austin, Texas. Did you come here? You look, you look far too friendly to be from uh, Houston. So <laughs> it's got to be Austin. No, we're from Dallas. Oh, cool. Yeah. Cool. We we're thinking about going there actually after this. How long are how long are y'all staying in? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was Still in Texas. That was pretty. That's good. how you guys said. Spot on. <laughs> yeah, for the weekend. Yeah. First time? Uh, not my first time. Yeah. Oh, this is the experienced veteran, yeah, exactly. and this is the the fresh. Really, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just, you stay here, see this palace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, that was a good choice. That was a good choice. What about you guys? Uh, we're we're in like a little way out. We were yeah. thinking about the cut staying in the Cosmopolitan a couple of days, but we found yeah, like a nice place outside. Yeah, really nice place. You know, cardboard cardboard box. Yeah. It's outside the strip. <laughs> nice. Air conditioned. Yeah. <laughs> And sure. air condition it's more like a suite book. than a cardboard box. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we're staying at the Airbnb. Okay, yeah, that's nice. It's kind of nice because we're here for like three weeks. Okay. So if you spend three weeks here and you're constantly on the strip, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. The temptations yeah. are everywhere. Exactly. So we we kind of traveling and treating it like a, a home, treat, treating it like home for now. Yeah. Why for three yeah. weeks? Yeah. Uh, we just got some work and friends over. Yeah. Like we have one friend who came over, and then it turns out like five other people are here. So we all thought we'd congregate over here. So I'm in Brazil. He's in London. Other guys are in the, uh, living in the states. So it's like a massive. What community. a mix! That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Do you guys have buddies over here as well? Not like yeah. living here, but we're all just kind of like here for the weekend. But no, but nobody has any friends in Nevada. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, really. like, no, I don't know. I mean, I have friends that go to school like at UNR, but uh -huh. like not, you know what I mean? Not like yeah, residents yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. There's some people moving in, but most of the locals try and get out of here as soon as possible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> makes sense. Oh, nice. Well, guys, it was really nice to meet you. Can I, if you guys are going out later, it would be cool to get your number and check where you guys are going to be. Yeah, we can give you our Instagram and we'll just like. Sure, go sure, sure, sure. How are you doing tonight? Um, we're actually going to a Magic Mike show. Oh no! <laughs> you guys have oh to no! Do it. Immediately he's claimed got, by the man. He's Mike. got the best six pack in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I quit my job at Magic Mike a long uh, time ago. Uh, okay, they weren't paying me. Good. They weren't paying me. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. Nice to meet you. And then after that, we're not sure. Yeah. So okay. Right. Okay. What time is that? Um. Ten. Out, bro. Come on. Okay. Excuse me, you're really beautiful. I just saw you walking and I have to say. Thank you. you. What's your name? You Anna, what's your name? Anna. Sam, yeah. lovely to meet you. Sam, nice to meet you. Her name is Sam. Your name yeah. Sam as well, Samantha though, right? Yeah. Okay, that's good, that's good. Yeah. We don't want the same name. You well, we have somewhere to be, yeah. but we gotta run. Yeah? Nice yeah. to meet you, It was Sam. nice to meet you, Anna. Take care. See you. Call me. Call me. <laughs> Alright, so back to the breakdown. Rock it down. So that was a uh, warm up. First approach for you. I done two before that. And yeah, it was. They weren't really in that social headspace yet. They just landed last night, so they were a little bit rusty. Yes, a lot of the time, what you'll find in Vegas is everyone's here for party holiday. So immediately, people are in a different mindset where they're breaking away from normal life and coming to a place that's outside of their normal world. That can be good and bad. 
it's good because it's holiday mode. So you're not taking things too seriously. You're sort of breaking out of your normal routine. Yeah. But on the other hand, it's a lot more flighty and flaky. Yeah. Because obviously it's holiday. It's like yeah. a dream world. So you're not you're unlikely to find like a really deep connection here. You're unlikely to find someone that you might think about staying in touch with afterwards. Yeah. But if you're practicing the approaching, you're trying to warm up, you're trying to get experience, you're trying to break out of your approach anxiety, it's great here because it feels like there's no consequence. It feels like there's there's no risk, right? Oh, 100%. No risk, limited reward because you're not forming relationships. Oh, yeah. The, the but, girls uh, I've met here, most of them are like leaving tomorrow or leaving two days. Yeah. Last time I met a local girl, that was good because, you know, we actually build that connection. But on the strip, everyone's kind of, you know, coming and going out, which is great actually for practice because you're just constantly talking to new people and that's what Vegas is about. It's about that experience, yeah. you know, in and out, like the burger. Yeah, so um, what you'll see there is a lot of people might see that interaction and say, oh, you should have escalated. If I was there, I would have escalated, like, whatever. Like, they'll say, like, oh, you didn't bring much humor. You didn't bring much humor and you didn't do this. But the point is, like, when, firstly, when you're warming up, you're not trying to be perfect. You're just trying to get out of your head. You're oh, just trying 100%. to talk. But secondly, it's also a dance. Like with some girls, it's going to be much easier. Some girls are in a more head, uh, heavier headspace. Yeah. So you can't take it all on yourself and take responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. it's not the right moment to escalate. It doesn't feel right. It yeah. has to be. Uh, it has to be complicit on both sides. So there, there wasn't that many opportunities. For you can't do it one way to a certain extent. But if they're not giving it back to you, then it just kind of dies down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like it's just there. Uh, but what I was going to say is for the warm-up, this happens to my clients a lot and they put way too much pressure in the warm-up. They approach a hot girl and they're like, man, I don't know why it didn't go right. So I, did, I really liked it. I wanted to, you know, get a number, but I f I'm like, yeah, imagine you're, you're an athlete, you know, even the best athlete in the world, if they walk up into the pitch and they just woke up, they're completely cold yeah. and they do a 100 meter sprint. Well, guess what? They're not going to do their personal best. So when it, when it comes to sports and gym and stuff like that, it makes sense, but when it comes to social skills, dating, people are like, oh, I can just wake up and just approach a stunner and just, yeah. you know, take her to my room. It's true. One minute. And then guys judge themselves a lot when it doesn't go well straight away. They say, oh, you know, my game's bad. I suck today, whatever. It doesn't matter. Stop judging yourself. Stop worrying about how it's going today. This is a long-term process. And in the long run, if you keep approaching, you stay social, you're going to get better. Don't worry about the day today. You don't go to the gym and come out and say, oh, I'm not bigger than I was before. No. It's a long-term process. You have ups and downs, but you have to get out of your head and that starts with talking to someone you see anyway. Yeah. One thing I was going to say there, what we're trying to do is trying to make it a little bit funny. So they said they're going to this uh, show. Um, what show? Magic Mike. Magic Mike. And um, I, we're actually going to a Magic Mike show. And I, and I was like, you guys don't need to go Magic Mike. You got uh, the best six back in Vegas right here. So this is really important to do, just to do the cocky funny. Also, if you talk, talk, talk good about your wing, what happens is it's not like him bragging, right? So you could talk good about him. But if you talk good about yourself, then it's kind of like, okay, well, this guy's showing up. arrogant, yeah. So this is a great way to pick up your wing. And at the same time, you become more high value. Because if your sure. wing is more high value, you're more high value as well. Yeah, so just try to keep it fun, especially in the warm-up as well. Don't take it too seriously. Yeah. You know, whatever you do is amazing. So don't think about the result. Just finished the Vegas boot camp and we had an amazing experience. We've got one of the students here to tell you guys about his experience. Yeah, absolutely. I guess in terms of my progress, um, specifically, initially I had a lot of trepidation about uh, just opening, just going up and talking to somebody. Yeah. It hasn't been a problem generally in my life, but in the last few years it's developed, and these guys helped me get over it, um, in part with some really good advice, uh, and in part with just a little bit of peer pressure. Sometimes little birdies just need to be pushed out of the nest. Um, so that, and then some feedback on when I would get uncomfortable and how to get past it, um, just in terms of uh, after you open, what it is that you do, and uh, it's been really helpful. Yeah, yeah one thing uh, that you mentioned is you need to work on actually pushing through the uncomfort zone, isn't it? Yeah. So this is, you know, when I'm coaching clients, this is one of the biggest sticking points when it comes to cold approaching because, you know, when we're doing it, like out in the daytime, we go into the bars, we're not actually drinking alcohol, right? Especially like in the in the daytime. Yeah. So you need that raw confidence in order to stay in the conversation and actually push through that awkwardness when you know that cold approaching is sometimes. You know, obviously sometimes you, you approach girls and it's just like it's so smooth, but so another time you have to push through that uh, 
um, you know, that uncomfort zone and that takes practice. Did the training help you actually uh, push through that uncomfort zone and, and learn how to, you know, stay in interaction when the girl is interested? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it helped exactly as you say, and maybe just to hit on a single point is that, I mean, it's easy to be confident when you're uh, in a bar and, and both people are maybe a little less coherent than their normal everyday life. But when you're out here um, on the strip, stone sober, which are when most of your interactions in your life are going to be, and you really understand what it is you're trying to do, and you're actually okay with the comfort, not just unaware of it because of the alcohol. I mean, it changes everything. It changes how you think about it and your actual um, skill level. All right, cool, man. Yeah, thanks for sharing your experience, and we'll see you guys on the next boot camp.